All right, so hello everyone. My name is Robert MacArthur. I'll preface this by saying that I was a second year undergraduate student when I undertook this project. So this is my first time doing anything like this. So let's get started. So our research presents a new interactive application that can generate music according to a user's preferences inspired by the process of biological evolution. The application composes sets of songs a user can choose from as a basis for the algorithm to evolve new music. By selecting preferred songs over successive generations, the application allows the user to explore an evolutionary musical space. The system combines autoencoder neural networks and evolution with human feedback to produce music. The autoencoder auto component is used to capture the essence of musical structure from a known sample of songs in a lower dimensional space. Evolution is then applied over this representation to create new pieces based upon previously generated songs the user enjoys. So there are a couple of factors which motivate this work. The application could be used by composers working with dynamically generated music, such as for video games and interactive media. Further, modifications to the underlying algorithm could allow for music to, be, to automatically change while just being played. This could be applied in games so that the accompanying music transforms dependent on metrics such as mood with a discriminator neural network or similar supplementing the human decisions. So to collect data to train the autoencoder, more than 30,000 MIDI files were scraped from vgmusic.com, a website which collects video game music. Video game music is known to be quite repetitive, so it was chosen to help the autoencoder find an underlying pattern. To further simplify the data set, the ability for notes to be held was removed. This would be equivalent to instantly pressing and releasing a note on the piano. The files needed to be processed so they could be fed into the autoencoder the files are converted into piano order notation for this purpose. The horizontal axis represents time and the vertical axis represents pitch. The range of the pitch is limited to 88 notes matching that of a piano. Further, to limit the size of the input, we decided that the autoencoder would only produce 16 bars of music per song. A bar was broken down into 48 ticks, limiting the horizontal axis to 768 across. This effectively represents music in a 768 by 88 dimensional matrix field with ones and zeros. The encoder part of the autoencoder is shown in the diagram. A sample, as shown on the last slide, is split into 16 bars and flattened, representing music as a series of 4,224 dimensional vectors. Each bar was individually compressed using a dense neural network with a hidden layer to a size of 300. These were then all concatenated before being compressed again to 180 dimensional latent space. As there was correlation between the features of the latent space vectors, Principal component analysis was applied to normalize the latent space based on the samples. The decoder is an exact mirror of the encoder with the relu activation function being used in all layers except the last, which uses a sigmoid function, representing how confident the decoder is and it should be played. Dropouts and batch normalization were applied to reduce overfitting. All of this created a 180 dimensional normalized space, which when combined with a confidence threshold needed to play a note, forms the genotype to perform evolution on. So the evolutionary process is as follows. Firstly, the population is initialized by sampling 180 dimensional vectors from a standard normal distribution, along with a note confidence threshold from a new uniform distribution. The decoder is then used to convert these into new pieces of music. The user listens to the generated songs, same the ones they enjoy, any songs that the user does not enjoy can be removed and surviving songs are then reproduced to form a new population. The population of songs can be seen in the green box, which when a song is selected, is displayed in piano roll notation on the bottom left. Controls are in the purple box, allowing the user to additionally create new random songs and change evolution parameters. For example, how likely and by how much the frequency of notes will change by, or the features of the 180 dimensional vector. I will now display a quick demonstration of the application. Bear in mind, this is the first generation of evolution. I hope the audio works. Let me know if it doesn't. Oh, you can't hear anything? Um... Let me just quickly stop the share and reshare it. No. Um, I share computer sound, that's probably a thing. All right, uh, attempt 
Yeah. Uh, attempt number two. Here is a quick demonstration on my application. The user can select songs in the green box to hear what has been generated. Oops. Um, there we are. Once that has been done, the user can then remove songs that they do not like. From the remaining songs, the user can click the Reproduce button to generate new songs based off the old ones. The process repeats itself and then the user can then save songs that they enjoy. All right, to assess the performance of the application, I personally generated a set of 49 songs for the application to be analyzed. This was to help confirm the application was capable of generating a diverse range of music with respect to tonality and rhythm. Displayed in the picture is a pitch class histogram. A pitch class histogram measures the frequency of types of notes. In the same music, there are 12 unique notes repeated up and down the octaves, forming our pitch classes. Shown on the screen is the distribution of the pitch classes for four songs in the data set. These are chosen to demonstrate that a variety of pitch class distributions is possible between separate runs. As can be seen, the distribution of pitches is quite different between the songs. This indicates that the four excerpts contributively have different tonalities and keys which implies that the application can create a variety of music tonality-wise. Another experiment was conducted to establish that the application can also produce a range of rhythms. To quantify this, the average inter-onset interval was calculated over the data set. The average IOI measures the mean time in seconds between two consecutive notes. The IOI can be used as a measure for how fast the rhythms are moving inside each song. A histogram was created to measure the distribution of the average IOI between songs in the data set. From the numeric results, the average IOI varies from less than 0.04 to more than 0.16 seconds. This effectively means that the average time between notes of the sewing moving piece is more than four times that of the fastest. It is noted that there's a skewing in the histogram towards faster moving pieces. I personally preferred faster moving compositions to slow ones when creating the data set, especially considering that note duration information was removed. Regardless, the histogram shows that the application can indeed generate a range of rhythmic compositions. So our research presented an application which shows that combining autoencoders of evolution successfully enables the composition of new music. It was confirmed that the application can create a diverse range of music with respect to rhythm and tonality. There are several paths for future work, however. A major constraint with the quality of the output is the inability for notes to be held. Removing this assumption would increase the performance of the application. Further, a human-centered evaluation could be conducted to study the quality of the music generated and affordances of our evolution interface. Further, the underlying model could be explored to automate parts of the evolution process. This could lead to dynamically changing pieces dependent on metrics such as mood. All right, um, thank you all for your time. The QR code can be scanned for the link to the download for the application, along with a couple of samples that have been made. Thank you.